Welcome to all second year students of translation department. This is the course of translation from English into Arabic. And today's lecture is about the translation of literary text and specifically the narrative text. Uh, it is extracted from the book Advanced English into Arabic uh, Translation. If you want to go and uh, Google this uh, book, you're going to find it in a PDF form format. Um, well, the intended learning outcomes of this lecture, uh, by the end of this lecture, you will have understood the distinctive features of the literary uh, gener narrative texts. Uh, also, you will have understood the syntactic problems encountered in translation along with the strategies to deal with these problems. So what is a literary translation? A literary translation, as other types of translations, makes the reader aware of the existence of literary works of other cultures. So simply speaking, we know we all know about uh, famous fig famous figures like Shakespeare, Emily Bronte, um, etc. We know about these uh, uh, famous writers just because of the role of translation. So um, here we come to uh, the narrative text. Uh, the, uh, nar a narrative text includes any type of writing that relates a series of events and includes both fiction, um, just like novels, short stories, poems, and non-fiction like biographies, memoirs, news stories. Well, a biography is the life story, life event of a specific writer, a specific uh, poet okay and a memoir is life events of a famous figure from the perspective point of view of the writer so uh, okay it can be uh, defined it can be defined as one method of uh, recapitulating past experience by matching a verbal sequence of clauses to the sequence of events so this is what is, what is meant by a narrative text uh, so what are um, what are uh, the syntactic problems that may face translators when they try to translate narrative text um, by syntax I mean the grammatical uh, the grammatical arrangement of words uh, in a sentence in a specific language uh, and if this this is a really a uh, problematic area for translators working with Arabic and English because there are uh, several di uh, differences between the two uh, syntax, between the syntax of English and the syntax of Arabic. The first difference is that in English we start with the subject and then the verb and then the object, while in Arabic we mainly start with the verb and then the subject and then the object, but in some um, some um, specific cases we start with the uh, with the subject uh, in order just to um, uh, emphasize uh, the doer of the action but uh, mainly we start with the verb mainly in Arabic we start we start with the verb um, so um, this difference must be taken into consideration by uh, the translator um, also the other difference is that English makes use of auxiliaries while auxiliary verbs while in Arabic we don't have auxiliaries and that is why auxiliaries cannot be translated into Arabic. What else? Okay, tense also constitutes a challenge for translators who are not fully aware of the Arabic of the English tense. Uh, simply in Arabic we have three forms okay, of tenses. We have past, present and future. For, for example, katabe, yaktubu, sayaktub, saufayaktub, past, present, future. While in, Ar in English we have almost, um, we have 12 tenses and examine this, uh, examine this, uh, uh, these couple of examples here. Mark went to school and Mark has gone to school 
both sentences are rendered by Mark. أذهب Mark إلى المدرسة. So we started with the verb in Arabic, and we rendered both the past. Uh, the past simple and the uh, present perfect into ذهبه because we don't have we don't have present perfect in Arabic so we, both of these um, tenses were translated into ذهبه again when I had finished my work I went for a walk I finished my work yesterday so عندما أنهيت عملي خرجت في نزهة and the translation for the other is أنهيت عملي البارحة So um, as you uh, can see that both finished and had finished are translated into أنهيت finished past simple had finished past past perfect well uh, both were translated into أنهيت and hey too that we we don't have a, a serious problem in translating the past simple because we we have past in arabic we have but the problem is when we um try to translate um a perfect okay the perfect tenses because we don't have we don't have the perfect uh, the, per, the perfective aspect here in arabic is not easily found so Instead, instead, we resort to use adverbs in order to convey the perfective aspect. Just consider uh, the following. They have just arrived from the airport. وصلوا من المطار توا. They arrived from the airport yesterday. So, وصلوا من المطار أمس. So, as you can see, have... Arrived, وصلوا توان. And arrived, وصلوا. So توان was used in Arabic to convey or to express the perfective aspect. Uh, so, uh, simply speaking, in order to translate present perfect, we add adverbs uh, just like فلتوي. توان حالا على الفور or لتوهم okay um, further the construction of كان قد كان قد is really effective when we translate past perfect examine this um, example she felt sad about losing her watch because she had had it for 20 years so had had it Okay, was translated into شعرت بالحزن لأنها أضاعت ساعتها لأنها كانت قد احتفظت بها عشرين عاما See, كانت قد احتفظت She had had it Okay, كانت قد احتفظت So, كان قد is really effective when we deal with the past perfect uh, also, uh, we have a problem, we have a difference when we translate the progressive uh, tenses uh, because simply we don't have auxiliaries and in these uh, tenses they are uh, using or making use of auxiliaries. Examine this example. Uh, my sister is waiting for me at the park. أختي تنتظرني في المنتزه. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. So, see, is waiting, this is um, present continuous, okay? It, is, it was translated into tantaliruni. Tantadar is something like, something like uh, present. Okay, present simple. So in Arabic, I mean. So we don't have present continuous in um, in Arabic. So that's why this is a, a real challenge for translators. While uh, was beginning. Oh my God, was beginning. كانت قد بدأت. كانت Alice قد بدأت. Or كانت in uh, in other context. For instance, if I said. I was reading. كنت أقرأ. كنت أقرأ. We 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 use 
كنت أقرأ in other uh, contexts. So uh, please uh, consider the importance of context in when you translate, um, uh, especially literary texts, because these these texts are um, uh, really challenging for translators. We we have to to pay our own language. Um, attention our attention because we we need to be creative when we when we translate a literary text we need to be creative in our own language okay um this is all for today's lecture and um just examine this um i've asked you to examine this uh, example and to translate it and it was uh, really uh, challenging for you because of the uh, syntactic difference between the English and Arabic and because of the the calling which is used here in this sentence just um, Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do once or twice she had peeped into the books her sister was reading but it had no pictures or conversations in it and what what is the use of a book thought alice without pictures of conversation so um what confused most of you was the uh, the tense concentration uh, you you couldn't you wouldn't no i mean um this was confusing because you didn't know what happened before what you didn't know did she uh was beginning to get very tired of sitting happened first or uh, the peeping into the book of her sister happened first so if you if you if you were able to if you were, were able to fully understand the um, the meaning of the tenses here you would be able to translate it easily uh, because sometimes um, meaning is hidden in the in the grammar meaning is hidden in the grammar and this this is what happened in this sentence and the call in here as i said the call in here was used as um to give you examples of what she tried to entertain herself but that was um helpless and uh, that is all for uh for this lecture thanks for watching and feel free.